Still plus politics, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Constituency projects are critical to national development as they are one of the means by which the federal government intends to take development to the nooks and crannies of the country through active involvement of the senators and honorable members of the National Assembly. In Nigeria, we still have issues of responsiveness of the electorates to voting and approach to choice of candidates of various parties in various states. Well, joining us to discuss this is Toafik Ogunjimi, PDP House of Assembly candidate at Biokuta North constituency. Welcome to the program, Toafik. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, viewers. Okay, you are contesting to run for office, and uh, we're wondering, let's just get to know why you decided to take up this uh, race, as it is, this journey. Well, um, my active years, I was a banker, and then um, going through the market hospital banking helped me to know what and uh, what are the issues affecting some of our people living in the rural areas and the urban areas. And the cost of it. I interacted with some farmers, which I know Nigerian system as at today is not is not is not good for them. And then there's a need for somebody to champion their cause. And I think part of the reasons why I decided to to put myself forward for an elective post is to put an end to some of these issues I discovered in the in the course of my banking career. So, and so many other things like that. I work with the market women too, and I know how they suffer to get funds to, to, to do their businesses. Many banker are uh, interacting with so many funding organizations that um, do lowest interest rate for developing countries. And I think I can also bring that to course when I'm elected as a member of First of Assembly. Okay. Um, the problems that you have identified border on agriculture and uh, economy and all that. What other things do, have you seen, have you identified yes, in Abiyokuta yeah. North constituency that you think you can address when you get there? Yeah, you, the, my local government, our system works. Twelve of the worst are in the urban areas, while the four are in the rural areas. The four in the rural areas, what they go through on daily basis to to make a living is very very tasking. And a, a, a person who has the feelings of others attacked, you also want to to find solutions to some of these problems. And you cannot do it except in a elective position. That you can move forward some of some of um, some of um, these issues to be considered in the house, and then others who are also part of you can also reason along with you and find solutions to them. That's one. Secondly, the youth in my in my local government currently. As it affects almost all the country, all parts of the country, they are jobless. We have to find a way to to bring them to sense. Some of them has, in fact, some of them are. They they they, they have ideas that um propel this country forward. There must be a way to bring all of them together, and reason with them, and make a policy that will help them to go in life. Uh, well, sometimes in the political space, what a lot of people are interested in is antecedents. Since you're trying to come into that political space and uh, be the member representing a Biokuta North constituency, so many people would like to know who you are. What are the antecedents that you think okay. will make people vote for you? Okay, my name is Tafi Kolada Rebunjine. I am a, 
I'm from Odekombe family in Agodo, Obeku Tanat of Ogo State. Uh, I was born over 50 years ago. I had my primary education, Jehovah Shalom Primary School, for local Lagos. Yeah, before we go into all school, that, Bef school. before we go into all university that. university education. I'm going for that. It's a bank grant. Okay. So, um, my university education, Alabama Banjo University. In my premier, in my early age, after the university, I was into banking for 28 years before I resigned. And then um, my political journey started in 2016. However, before then, I've been to other partisan politics, but a full time politics I started in 2016. And by 2019, I contested for House of Assembly in Abekuta, not under Action Democratic Party, which I did not win. By 29, by, after 2019, I joined PDP. And then I was able to also pick the ticket again. That's the background. Uh, well, thank you for the background. Now, we've heard, because we're concerned about your chances in that election, the MD, uh, SDP, uh, we have heard, has endorsed the PDP candidate, Ladi Adebutu. Meanwhile, the LP has endorsed the APC candidate, Dakwa Biodun, who happens to be the incumbent right now in Ogun State. Incumbents, yeah. How do you think that yes. would play out, knowing that LP is like uh, the beautiful bride now? LP is like the most valuable player in uh, 2023, according to some people, 2023 elections. That is a formidable force that you are contending with. How do you think your chances are in the forthcoming election on the 18th of March, 2023? In my local government, the total number of uh, votes cast for Labour Party, you know, you know the figure. And in Nogo State too, if we sum them up, you know what the figures are. So that that doesn't mean because they they have won in Lagos State and the rest, that, that means they, they have won in all parts of the country. In Nogo State, they, they, they have marginal marginal figures. So it's not a threat. It's not a threat to us. So the, the PDP chances are high, according to what you are very, saying. Very, very high. I but you're contending you. with our an incumbent our governor. Our candidate, Ade, Ade, Ade Butu, hmm. is a man of the people, I can tell you. I can assure you, this time next week, when the, we will be at the peak of the, of the preparation, the written by them will tell you that... Um, if Adebutu is a man of the people, what are those things that you think will make the people really vote for him? What are the things that you think people love about him that will make him vote for him and his party, which you also are a part of? Well, because if it affects him, it affects a, you it, too. Uh, yes, he's a philanthropist by excellence. He was, he, uh, I, he has never been an executive a man in any government establishment. And what he does in terms of welfare, a very thing of the people, uh, he has no equal in the state. I can tell you the transformers, the transformers that he has donated to to so many communities is over three hundred. It's over three hundred. And you can you can and he has done those things in a, in a Without looking back, he doesn't. He's not the person that will expect returns from those things or, or or people to pay him. He's just fortunate that then um, he's contesting now. He has done that in the past 10, 15 years. He has done that on his own. Uh, he believes in human welfare. A man, woman, people must live well. So that has been for him, and he's paying for the party. Okay, 18th of March is still some, some days away. Um, are we looking at more alignments and realignments with some parties, more collaborations with other parties, or you're just uh, comfortable with the SDP endorsing your candidate and that's all? 
Are you talk? Are you in talks with other parties? Politics is a is a is a is a continuous exercise. We we'll keep on talking, keep on talking, keep on talking. Today, before I'm I'm live now, you are just coming from a place. We are going to talk to one of our leading leaders in the state too, and then the governor is there, the team, and so many other groups like that. We have I have talked to them. We we'll keep on talking. We we'll keep on talking with the other political parties that are interested in us, the ADC and the rest and the rest. We we'll keep on talking. 24 hours in politics is a long time. So many of the things you are hearing now, do this and this. Within 24 hours, the, the goalposts can still change. Hmm. Interesting. Politicians can never cease to uh, amaze me with their bracadabra that they do. Uh, but uh, now... PDP is going into an election with the incumbent. APC is on the throne, as it were. And there are so many other parties, no matter how small they might be. But you're going into this election uh, brandishing a manifesto, which others are also brandishing anyway. What is it in your manifesto, the PDP manifesto, that is different from all the other ones that other parties will show the people? What are the things that you intend to do as a party that gives you a, an upper hand, as it were? Um, the, our slogan is food for all. Food for all. And you know, Anadis says, when, the, when you have food, half of your problem is solved. When you are welfare, half of your problem is solved. So we are going to full-scale agriculture hmm. that will provide food for everybody at affordable rate. And that is the most important. People are hungry now. You know, people are hungry. Cost of living. In fact, you know what the country is, is the state is. So you know what we are saying. Once we are sworn in May 29, we will quickly move into action. And then before six months, we will start seeing the, the effect of our governors. How do you intend to do that? So food food on that the table that. is, is very vague. It's like in the other, in the other time, in the one administration that said uh, stomach infrastructure, that's how it is sounding. It, eventually, he was also a PDP governor. Now, when you say food on the table, how are you going to do it? Is it that you're going to give us a fada rice <laughs> or you're going to give us uh, <laughs> gari on our no, table? No, I just oh, told you. What, we, what, we, what strategies we, are you going to use that. To provide the food once on the everybody, table. Once everybody, yes, you know, for us, you know, once the condition for the conditions for people to to do their business hmm. is um, is is well spread out, people will take advantage of it, and we start. Those who want to do farming will go. Those who want to do business, those who want to do trading, those who want to do this will do. What's the environment? For instance, now, if farmers ask, if farmers have rights to loans to improve their, to spend on their farms, in six months, in six in a year, the that food will be will be better than what it is to be. Once farmers, women market market women can get loans from banks at the lowest rates, or from an our agency at the lowest rates, their business will improve. Mm. Once um, youth also can can go into any vocational training or whatever that they want in life, and they, there is support from government for them, they will the things will change, and everybody will have money in their, in their pocket. And once you have money in your pocket, you have food on your table. Mm. Is the environment? Is the is the is the policy? Once the policy is flexible for everybody. To do, to key into everybody. We are in this country when PDP ruled in, in 1999 to date. You know how the policies is. But once people are not satisfied with a with a good husband and they go and marry another one, and they start getting beaten by the old one, they will know that uh, one is better than the other. 
Okay, we were just afraid that, okay, uh, at the national level, you had problems, and those problems were not addressed, and those problems may have contributed to your performance at the national level. I hope it's not going to be the same uh, at this, the state level that we're talking about right now. Uh, we wish you luck, you and your party, we wish you luck, and may the best man win, that's all we can say. Everything, power comes from God, as we say. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, the best one that will win. I'm the best one that will win. <laughs> Thank you, Tofi yes. Gunjimi, for coming on the program today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We've been talking with okay. Tofi Gunjimi, PDP okay. House of Assembly candidate, Abiyokuta North constituency. And that's how we wrap it up uh, today on the show. We leave you with highlights of the week. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Members of the Labour Party as of today are already identifying with the PDP. We are only talking about the candidate himself. Mm. The candidate himself has internal issue within the party to resolve. And it has nothing to do with us. And we will not want to get into it. Okay. We do not want to be involved in that internal issue of the Labour Party. Okay. But as many members of the Labour Party in Lagos State who are willing, who are out there to support in dislodging the women that have held the state by the jugular over the 24 years, of course, I've, I, 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 we are hoping to welcome them and work with them okay. to deliver and rescue Lagos State. It is you and I mm. that cause the trust of the judiciary. And it is people like PDP element, like people in PDP. When I say you and I, I'm not talking about you in person. I'm talking about the average Nigerian, about our people. It is only when it pays us that the democracy, is, the democracy is flourishing. The moment we don't get the results we anticipate, we say democracy democracy is under attack, democracy is under a siege. No, it's not over. I, I, I made a promise when I became 50 years old last year that I will spend the rest of my life uh, serving the country. So I've spent uh, 50 years growing up and taking care of myself, so I'm fine. So I will spend the rest of my life serving the country. But serving the country is not always that you must serve the government. Uh, what I'm doing now is public service, I, I believe so. And we have said enough, not only me, other people. So all of this that INEC is doing is really medicine after death. This, these elections have been really below the standard whether international or even African standard. But of course, we've had some bodies like ECOWAS and the African Union and the Commonwealth saying that they were largely peaceful. I mean, President, former President Abu Mbeki said that, and also President Baikoroma, former President Baikoroma of Sierra Leone. But as a party, we believe that these elections, uh, the presidential elections have not been conducted in the manner and way that INEC, particularly the chairman, Professor Mahmoud uh, Yakubu, told us that the results will be uploaded from the polling units to the IRF. So I think preventing conflict is going to have a lot to do with INEC being more transparent uh, about how it is handling this material. What is it going to do when it tries to wipe the BVAS machines in preparation for the gubernatorial elections? It's promising to have all that backup data available. I think INEC is going to need to be much more transparent than it has been so far in this process. I think a lot of the conflict and violence that we've seen so far was a result in part because INEC was not especially transparent about this data over recent days. I think if INEC had been a little bit more straightforward about what was happening, uh, a lot could have been prevented. This election left to me as a, as a person is probably the fairest election in the history of this country. I'll give you a few reasons why. This is the first time that seven sitting governors, seven, seven governors have failed in their bid to go and retire in the Senate. Seven. Of these seven governors, I've not seen one of them to come out to say I was unfairly beaten because they knew they were beaten fair and square. In Nasarawa, the former governor of Nasarawa lost his election to an SDP member. SDP. 